What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to cover everything you need to know about setting up the compression filter for your microphone. We're going to jump right into this one, so let's do it. If you haven't yet, I've been making in-depth tutorials on setting up all the filters you need for getting that professional quality sound out of your microphone. This video is one of them. I've also done some videos on the expander filter, noise gate, and limiter filters. I highly suggest checking those out. In the future videos, I'm going to do a video on the EQ after this compression. And then if there are any more questions, we're gonna dive into more depth on um on anything that you know comes up in this video we're going to be covering everything you need to know about compression so we're going to be talking a lot about the parameters that operate a compression filter how the ratio functions within a compressor um, and then strategies for setting up a compressor for yourself uh, so it's going to be a fun one it's going to be very in-depth uh there's not a lot of content when it comes to this type of thing on youtube so i highly suggest sticking around for the whole video because it's just going to be jam-packed with information that you probably didn't know. When most people are explaining the compression filter, what they say is the compressor will squash down higher higher level volumes and bring up lower level volumes. Um, in a sense, this is correct. A compression filter is going to decrease the dynamic range of an audio signal. The dynamic range is the distance between the highest points and the lowest points in an audio signal. The compressor effect reduces the dynamic range of an audio signal. One of the main purposes of reducing a dynamic range is to permit the audio to be amplified further without any clipping being involved, meaning you can increase the volume of the audio signal without clipping the actual signal. So when we're compressing an audio signal, what we're doing is decreasing that dynamic range. We're actually compressing or squashing that audio signal. There are some parameters that operate a compression filter. Those parameters are the threshold, the knee size, the attack time, the release time, and the ratio of the compression. The threshold sets when the compression will be engaged with the audio signal, so at which decibel level. The knee size is the transition between non-compressed to compressed audio signal. Uh, this is how hard or soft the audio signal transition from non-compressed to compressed will be. The attack time is how quickly the compression will be applied to the signal while the release time is the opposite of the attack time. It sets the speed in which the compression is released from the audio signal. And then the ratio specifies the amount of attenuation that will be applied to that signal. Using these parameters, we're going to bring a lot of great, beautiful sound to the vocals on our track, whether you're live streaming or you're recording a vocal for a podcast. A compression filter is a beautiful thing. There are a few compression filters that we're going to dive into before we talk about setting up a compression filter for yourself. First and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the knee size. Some compression filters filters allow you to set what is called the knee size. Um, a lot of sound engineers will refer to the terms hard knee or a soft knee. On the graph in front of you, what you're seeing is an example of an audio signal with a compression transition from non-compressed to compressed audio with a hard knee or a soft knee. As you can tell, a hard knee is a very hard angle, whereas that audio compression becomes immediate. It is squared off. It is not a smooth and gradual transition like the soft knee would be. The knee size for a hard knee is when the knee size itself is set to zero. A soft knee is when the knee size is very large. I myself actually use a very soft knee um, for my knee size. I actually have it all the way up. I want a very smooth and gradual transition with my audio signal. I don't want that audio to sound like it's getting warped in any way. I want it to sound very natural and smooth. And that's why I decide to use a soft knee and the softest knee possible. The next parameter I wanted to go into is the ratio. The compression ratio is often misunderstood. The compression ratio simply specifies the 
the amount of attenuation that's going to be applied to the signal. The compression ratio is measured by decibels, a ratio of one to one. As you can tell on this graph here in front of you, the very top line on this graph is a one to one ratio compression. A one to one ratio compression represents what is called unity gain, or in other words, no attenuation applied to the audio signal. This is the same exact audio signal. No compression is being applied to it. A ratio of two to one indicates that a signal exceeding the threshold by two decibels will be attenuated down to one decibel above the threshold. Or a signal exceeding the threshold by eight decibels will be attenuated down to four decibels above the threshold, so on and so forth. The same logic can be applied to every ratio. So a ratio of three to one, if a signal exceeds the threshold by three decibels, it will be compressed down to one decibel past that threshold. If the ratio is three to one and the signal exceeds the threshold by six decibels, it will be attenuated down to two decibels exceeding that threshold. A threshold of infinity to one would be considered limiting or a limiter. We've discussed the limiter filter in a previous video. If you're interested in looking at the limiter filter, I highly suggest checking that video out. In more simple terms, the compression ratio is simply stating how much compression will be applied to the audio signal. What we're doing is setting a threshold in which the compression will begin to be engaged and all the audio that exceeds that threshold will be compressed based on the ratio that you have set for that compressor. So if your ratio is a two to one ratio and your audio ex signal exceeds the threshold by two decibels, then it will be compressed down to one decibel, meaning you're compressing that audio signal in half. You are squashing it down to one decibel instead of two decibels. The next thing we need to talk about is the attack and release time. I've built a little bit of a graph here. It's not perfect, but it will explain how the attack and release works with the compression filter. What you're seeing in front of you is an example of the attack and release time. At the top where it says input signal, this is the input signal without any compression being applied to it. Now below that are two examples of the compression. One's going to be a volume change example and the other is the audio signal example. The volume change example, as you can tell, once that audio signal hits the attack range, the attack time is how quickly the compression is being applied to that audio signal to where it reaches the compressed signal, the amount of compression that you have set for that audio signal. And then once that audio signal then goes back through the threshold, the release time activates and how quickly that audio signal returns to a normal state is the release time. You can see that as well in the output signal. You see the signal traveling through. Once the compression is engaged, you see the attack time engage. It begins to compress that audio signal down to the ratio that you have set. Then in the yellow, you have the compressed audio signal. And then once that audio signal goes back through the threshold, the release time is engaged and you see that audio signal slowly return to a normal state. Let's take this graph for example. What you're seeing in front of you is compression in real time. On the left, you see the amplitude, so that audio signal's volume level. And on the bottom, you see time. So over time, this audio signal is being developed. The yellow dotted line is the threshold that we have set, and the red dotted line is the audio signal prior to any compression being applied. What you see here is once that signal exceeds that threshold, it is getting compressed down based on the ratio that you have set for the compression. So the audio signal exceeds the threshold and it gets compressed down, meaning the volume decreases by X amount based on the compression ratio. We've now covered all the parameters that operate a compression filter. Now we're ready to begin with the steps for setting up your own compression filter. I've kind of laid out a step-by-step -step guide for setting up compression in a way that not only will help you make sense of the thing, it also will point you in the right direction for compressing your audio correctly. So with that being said, let's jump into the first step of setting up your own compression filter. Step one, setting the ratio. You will want to start with a moderate ratio to help you get adjusted. 
I suggest starting with a ratio anywhere between a 3 to 1 or a 4 to 1 ratio. This will be a moderate ratio and generally anything within this range is what's suggested for vocals. Step 2. Setting the attack slash release time. You'll want to start with a fairly quick attack and release time. The reason for that is we're going to make adjustments to the compression via the threshold and so on and so forth. Um, so we want to start with a fairly quick attack and release so that we can hear the audio signal change quickly. That way we can make the adjustments necessary and we'll go back and revisit the attack and release time later. So go ahead and start with setting your attack and release time to five milliseconds, I would say on both of those. Step three, setting the knee size. You will want to start with a soft knee, so turn that knee size way up high. I have mine all the way up. You can do anywhere from 10 to 24 decibels or whatever, whatever your program allows you to do. I suggest doing a fairly soft knee, so make sure you turn that knee size up. Step four, setting the threshold. What you're going to do is listen to your track or monitor your vocals if you're compressing your audio live in real time. And you want to adjust that threshold until you see the vocals being compressed down three to six decibels. So what you want to do is kind of record an audio signal, whether that be in Audacity or something like that. Record an audio signal without any compression and then apply compression to that audio signal until it's being compressed in the range of three to six decibels, meaning it's decreasing that volume by three to six decibels. Step number five, setting the gain or volume. You wanna adjust the gain output or apply a gain filter to the microphone and you wanna make sure the audio or the level of the volume for the microphone or your vocals is hitting in the range of negative five to negative 10 decibels on the output. So if you're using OBS, you want to monitor your microphone volume and you want to make sure that your microphone is hitting anywhere from negative five to negative 10 decibels. I myself have my microphone hitting right at negative 10. Anything within that range is fairly good. You can go below negative 10 decibels. I wouldn't suggest going anywhere below negative 15 decibels. Step number six is adjusting the attack and release time. So we're gonna go back to the attack and release time and we're gonna set it in a position that we like. What you see on the screen is actually the attack and release time that I use for myself. Uh, the attack time is set to 30 milliseconds. The release time is set to 30 milliseconds. I suggest a lower release and attack time. Anywhere from 30 to 120 milliseconds will be good. It will create a nice gradual change in the audio when the compression is being applied. Once you've followed the six steps that I've laid out for you, your compression should be just about perfect for yourself and where you would like it. I suggest toying with the compression filter in order to achieve the sound you want to achieve or just to learn how it functions a little bit better. What you can do is change the ratio, you can change the threshold and toy with the attack and release time until you you know really get a grasp of how that a compression filter works with an audio signal keep in mind guys that over compression is a thing so you don't want to over compress an audio signal it can really really make your vocals or just any audio that you're compressing sound really bad but if you use those six steps six if you use those six steps that i laid out for you you will have a very solid compression applied to your microphone and it will sound very good the next step for setting up your mic is doing things Things like expansion, equalizer, setting limiters, and a noise gate filter, all kinds of different stuff. And equalizer is probably the most important filter. But the compression filter adds a really beautiful, beautiful effect to your vocals. I noticed in my one and only audio video that you'll ever need, I actually made a, a mathematical error in that video. I show the compression, right, with the numbers for the compression that we have set for the preset that we have in my Discord server. And in the graph, I show the compression going from negative 35.2 decibels down to negative 34 decibels. When in all actuality, it would actually be the reverse of that. With that being said, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you need any further assistance with setting up this stuff, feel free to hop in my Discord. Um, I'm there, we've got some pretty smart dudes there as well. They're willing to help out. We've got a pretty cool community and it's growing fast. 
So definitely join the Discord if you need any more information or just assistance with setting up your own compression. Um, also guys, if you're watching this video and you learned something, hit that subscribe button, like the video, uh, and ring that notification bell so that you can... I did that out of order, but whatever. Ring the notification bell so you know when I release my next video. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.